have any of the besides Ilock, have any of the developers had issues with like wanting to support it? Because like, obviously they might not want to support it because there's just not enough people to monetarily justify it. That sure, whatever. But have you been told any technical reasons why they might want not want to do so? Yes, yes. Many many people say like for instance they use Juice. But they wrote some custom-made libraries that basically their plugins heavily depend on, and they are not um, platform agnostic. So right. they are basically locked for Mac OS or, or Windows. And if they would like to support Linux, they would have to substantially like um, invest time to rewrite those libraries and stuff. So that is, I had that um, maybe five or six times that people say we actually cannot do it because it's too much work for us. Mm -hmm. Okay, that 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 makes sense. Um... And th that sort of just comes down to they would do it if there was enough justification, if there was enough people in that space, if there was enough money to make it viable, they would be more than happy to make it platform agnostic. But until that is the case, then I get it. Absolutely. And also what I often hear is that we have no one in the team who has any idea about Linux. I hear that really often and that's actually very sad because then I usually offer them in my um, utopian way of looking at things, I could be that person for free. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, they usually don't want that risk and they right. they just, yeah, they don't do it. Yeah. <laughs> no, I get that. If that, it's just a, that's just a problem that's going to happen, right? Like if you don't have the technical expertise to do it and then you've got to hire someone to bring it on, it's... <laughs> Uh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. But you know, something else that is actually interesting that I learned also through this initiative is, mm. you know, like with servers, any anyone I think who has a little idea of, of computers knows that Linux is a big thing, right? Linux mm -hmm. and open source is a big thing. And actually in, in my, like in this position that I'm in, I'm asking people to support Linux where there's only a very small market and people believe it's really super niche, you know, it's actually not true because most of the hardware stuff for music actually runs Linux. Mm -hmm. And there is, um, there are some, some people who specialize in this. I think Elk Audio, if I remember, they make an operating system that is entirely um, intended to be used on like, how, how do you say like um, low performance, efficient hardware to actually mm. power hardware devices that make music stuff. And then there's even crazier things. Like there is, I think probably one of the most um, widely adopted DAWs, um, Ableton's Live. And they have a standalone unit that runs live and it's actually running on Linux. So they have live as Linux version, but they choose to not um release it to the public they choose to not support the platform even though they have it actually that kind of makes sense so there there's some use of it for the actual devices the, like it's an embedded device that like makes perfect sense why that would be the case but yeah. it's yeah i <sighs> again like it's it's just like a lot of things you have linux sort of but all every single company that might say we don't want to support Linux, like ninety nine percent chance they're using Linux somewhere in their development stack, whether it be their web server, their build server. Like Linux is involved somewhere. It's just they don't want to bring it into like the main thing they're providing. Yeah, I think it's in general also the problem that many open source projects have, right? Like uh, people like to take it mm -hmm. and if the license allows it, they even basically white label it and use it for something else. But if someone asks for something in return, then it's too complicated for them. Mm. They cannot be bothered. So I, yeah, I, I, and I actually had quite a few conversations with developers that said, you know, actually uh, how much I benefited from Linux. Okay, let's do this. Let's make Linux builds. Mm -hmm. Even if there's only five users who use it just out of idealism. And I think that, I mean, I think that's the right way to look at it, but of course I cannot decide for, for others. Everyone sure, has sure. to decide for themselves. Sure, and it also would depend on the complexity of the plugin. I'm sure the simpler ones you know that might take i don't know a week or so of work to get running uh, running on linux are probably much easier to justify than something where it's gonna take 
quite a lot of effort for like the idealism sort of side of things. If it's, we just want to support it because it sounds cool to support when it's easier to do so. Like it, it's easier to sort of justify that. Sure, sure, absolutely. And then also, I think on macOS and Windows, there are some things that I'm not even sure if they are technically so easily to implement on Linux. Like, for instance, there's a bunch a bunch of plugins that do inter-plugin communication. Basically, you have different channels in your track and you have different instances of the plugin and they can talk to each other. Mm. And I'm not even sure how they do that on, on Windows and macOS. Um, Certainly, me being stupid and using my DAW as a flat pack makes this impossible from the get go. <laughs> but um, so I think there's also some plugins that use, you know, some patchy, hacky technology that might need to be reinvented for Linux in order to make it happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right, right. Okay. Yeah, this goes back to it just not being platform agnostic. I would hope yeah. they're doing sensible networky things with it that are fairly portable but i i think we've all heard cases and if you've ever looked at things like the leaked windows xp source code i think everyone kind of knows that when nobody is going to be seeing the code people will do some things that probably are not the best of ideas <laughs> yeah yeah i think that can be assumed yeah I even had, you know, like in with my company where we, we made web applications with open source technologies, mm -hmm. I was always like frustrated if something was not a nice solution, right? And I, I said to the customer, you know, it, it works, but actually for us, it's frustrating because it's not, it's more like a workaround than actually a real solution, but there was not enough budget or whatever, not enough time. And many of the, the owners of other companies uh, always told me, why do you worry? It works, right? And you got the money for it. It's okay. But I think as, as long as you really care for also like my guys who were working on this stuff, they were frustrated because they felt like we delivered actually crap. It's kind of working, but it was not something that we're proud of. And I think um, many developers, especially if, if you go back to these uh, installers and stuff like that, I don't know, it's really just like um, crap in the end. So it kind of works, but it's frustrating. Yeah, probably also to work on it. I don't know. Mm -hmm. So when you were first starting to get interested in Linux, what was the state of things in the audio space? Uh, hmm. Hard to say. I think it was not so bad. There, there were a couple of issues with, um, you know, where like you had to restart the computer if you had no idea about pipe wires um, underminings and how they work. Like you were making music, all of a sudden, back audio was gone. Mm -hmm. And then you restarted and it would work for another couple of hours, stuff like that. In general, I think it was already very good, but mm -hmm. there were like some, yeah, some things that you made. And I have to be honest, I mean, there's bugs and crashes and stuff also on Mac on Windows. So it's not that this was something super special, but it was a bit more than I was used to, mm -hmm. like little things like that. And also sometimes, um, you know, like when you open different projects, sometimes the sample frequency changes like from 44.1 to 48 or something like that. And that would maybe in, in some instances create like um, digital burst sounds, like really crazy sounds that could also technically kill your speakers if you would listen too loud and stuff like that. But this is really all gone for me. I, I don't have any issues like that anymore. Mm. What I sometimes still have that I don't really understand if it's like Wayland connected or whatever. But what I sometimes have is that, for instance, drag and drop between two apps. When you, and you have, for instance, a sample browser app where you go through your audio library and you want to drag it into the DAW, this may be working for two hours and then all of a sudden it doesn't work anymore. And in, in X11, you could just restart the session, but with Wayland, you have to log out, log in. And <laughs> so stuff like that, sometimes I have to be honest, there's little things like that that still sometimes happen. And I don't really understand them in, in, in some cases. That's yeah. not just a your system thing. I do notice the same as well. Like I'll be going through, working on some video stuff. I try to drag a thumbnail into my browser and it just doesn't work. Who knows why? There's probably some log somewhere that's indicating an error, but I don't know what log it is or where it would be. So a lot of times I kind of just restart and works fine then. Yeah.